even the comfort that we live in, even the pain that we overcome, every moment of my existence is entirely dependent on Allah. That realization is what we mean in knowing God when we talk for Muslims. Of course, when we talk of atheists, when we say knowing God, we mean knowing as in believing in His existence. So, when I say knowing God or obstacles to knowing God, it is important that we keep this mind that we are talking of both uh, groups and both um, extremes. Now, if I digress for a moment, a couple of years back when we were talking on um, negative suffering and the end of negative suffering, we said time and again that the root cause of a human being's suffering was this illusory self that the mind creates, the ego that in Islamic texts you might call the nafs. And not only did we say that this nafs and this ego that the human being creates and gives it a false sense of independence and identity is the source of negative suffering, but it is also the reason why a person does know Allah. Because the ego is created on conflict and it thrives on conflict, for those of you who may um, recall that series. Now, when it thrives on conflict, then obviously it does not know the meaning of peace and tranquility. And Allah says, it is only by the remembrance of Allah, single-minded devotion and remembrance of Allah, that a heart will find rest and peace. So when you bring this together, you find that it is the same ego that stops one from peace and tranquility and remembrance of Allah, which creates the conflict. When you now close that loop, you will come to an understanding that on one hand I say the ego and the nafs is what prevents us from knowing Allah or realizing how dependent we are on Him. On the other hand, I have already introduced and said that the greatest obstacle is our self-will. Our sense of I want versus what Allah wants. Now these two are actually one and the same. How are they one and the same? Let us take a simple example. Let us suppose that I as a Muslim say that yes, I wish to surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I acknowledge that I am the slave of Allah. And as a Muslim, the word Muslim comes from taslim, to submit. I submit and surrender to Allah, sincerely. And I do not want anything except what Allah wants. Very good. Now the issue and the challenge is going to be, how will I know what is it that Allah wants? Because I am not like Musa ala Nabi now alayhi salam that he was able to speak to Allah. So in every moment of my life there are so many decisions that I have to make that are neither wajib nor haram, fard, nor makru, nor mustahab. They are just mubah. I wish to change my career. I wish to move from one country to another. I wish to start a new relationship. I wish to eat something. I wish to go to a certain place. At every moment of my life, when I want to make a decision, the thought will come to my mind. I have said that I have surrendered to Allah. Now how do I know whether this is what Allah wants or not? You see the, the, the challenge there. And so as long as there is I, I will not know what is it that Allah wants. The only way to make to be a hundred percent sure that what I am doing is exactly what Allah wants, is to remove the I from the equation. It is only when that I is removed, and there is no anyone there to want and say, I want this, even though Allah wants that. That is the only way to know. And when that happens, then that person remains physically as a human being, but there is no will in him. He is driven only by the will of Allah. His coming and going, his standing and sitting, his sleeping, his moving, his eating, his talking, is only the will of Allah. And it is on this basis that you will then understand when Allah recites the qasida of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. When he says, for example, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. When he praises his messenger and says, ma yantiqu anil hawa. He does not speak out of his own desire. In huwa illa wahyun yuh. Or when he praises his messenger and says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah. And you do not wish anything except what Allah wishes. 
In a famous tradition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. He says, if you wish to see a dead man walking on the earth, if you wish to see a man who has gone through death, he is dead, he has died, he has gone to the next world, but he is still physically alive. If you wish to see a dead man walking on the earth, then look at Ali bin Abi Talib. Why? Because Ali is this individual who has no will in him, isn't it? It is because he has surrendered every form of what plagues most human beings. That conflict between what Allah wants and what I want. And it is for this reason that you will find Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Muhammad It is because in the personality of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam he eliminated any sense of self-will. That is why the Prophet said looking at him is like looking at a person who is... Now to understand this a little better if we digress for a moment. What is the most painful experience that a human being goes through when he dies? The most painful experience a human being will experience when he is dying is not physical pain. Physical pain can be overcome. Today science has progressed where a doctor will give you a means. Science has progressed today to a point where they can subdue physical pain. They can give you drugs where you will not feel any pain, no matter what form of illness you are dying from. The most frightening pain that every human being goes through at death is the loss of identity. That loss of I-ness, because that is an illusion, isn't it? It's, pre it's produced by the mind. It's not something religion is saying. Psychologists will tell you this. Because that sense of self was created in conflict and in illusion by the mind, when the mind ceases to work and the human being realizes they're dying and they gradually realize they're coming towards... They are not going to extinction because the soul does not face extinction. But because the human being all his life believed he was the I in the mind, he now believes that he is extinct. And that fear of extinction is the most frightening thing, that loss of identity and self. Now if a person has purified himself in this world, and if a person has gone through processes by which he surrenders to Allah completely, and there is no sense of self, then it would be true to say that this person now has already experienced what people experience at death. He already knows what a person feels when he dies. That sense of loss of selfness and identity versus knowing Allah. Hence the other tradition from the Messenger of Allah, peace be on him and his family as well, where he says, Mutu qablan tamutu. Die before you die. Die before you die means what? Means die to your ego, die, die to that false sense of identity so that when you are still breathing, eating, sleeping, you have experienced what it is on the other side. Then there is no ignorance or fear of what is to come after. You already know what is to come after. You have already attained the level of لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون Neither shall they fear nor shall they grieve. And it is on this basis that famous Urafa as well have said towards the same point, such as when self-will vanishes, then true understanding of Allah is achieved. And when that is achieved, then there is no difference between this world and the hereafter. Meaning now you know exactly what is to happen after that. Then at physical death, the world mourns your loss because they lose your physical existence and being and they lose an individual through whom Allah was acting. But for you, there is nothing to fear. It only gets better. So this is one example. Now this surrender to Allah that we see that Allah praises in His Prophet, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا إِنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ and so on, He also shows us in other messengers and other prophets. 
A very good example of whom is Ibrahim ala Nabina alayhi salam. Ibrahim is associated with the idea of surrender. And because Islam is tied to the idea of surrender, you will find that a lot of the practices of Ibrahim are part of the life of a Muslim. Especially